What did he say? Giggle time. <laughs> the giggle, giggle time, happy fun hour. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what they call it now. I I I much prefer the tee hee tickle party. <laughs> <laughs> Hey fellow crappers, you got your old pal, your old buddy, R.D. Reynolds here, once again, back with your weekly dose of WrestleCrap Radio, and on the other end of the tin can and string is my co-host, the always effervescent Mr. Blade Braxton. Ah, effervescent, I'm back, to, I the, dismay, to the dismay of 150 pounders typing away on their keyboards everywhere, I'm back for more. I don't even know what effervescent means. That's probably I probably just said something very vaguely homosexual. But I don't know. For some reason, I I thought of uh, the first thing that popped in my head was Alka Seltzer bubbling. I went to the library. Oh, how exciting! Tell it, me more. It was thrilling. Get this: you can go there at my library. I don't know if it's this way everywhere. I'm, I'm very thrilled with the library here. I I never had gone to the library really. Until the last week or so, and then I've been like, I've written two books. I would hope so. So I was at the library, and you you can get books, of course, which I knew. And I'm not, I'm not the world's biggest reader. I mean, I read a lot. I just got done uh, reading the Terry Funk book, which was pretty good. I thought that was very enjoyable. But I I like to to check out other things at the library because they they have Uh. like they have like DVDs. They have, yeah. they have CDs, all kinds of junk. And so, if you if your library is like mine, you can check out a lot of uh, you know old folk records on on LP. <laughs> Where you can't find that on the internet. If you're if you're looking for the best of the mamas and the papas or something, a little Jim Croce, a little Jim Croce, a little, a little uh, Harry Chapin maybe. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. <laughs> we better stop. So anyway, I go there. Back to 2005, sir. And I could not believe it. They had, they actually have wrestling books on tape. Oh, excellent. Actually, even better. Wrestling book on CD. Oh, boy. It was The Stone Cold Truth, which I've never read. Hmm. And, and so, I love it, sir. Steve Austin has led a very interesting life. And, and most people listening to this probably know all the details about how he got fired from WCW, how he worked for Jerry Jarrett, and he hated it, and... You know, the whole thing with him and Chris Adams and the and the ex-wives, all that stuff. And then he goes to WWE, and of course he becomes a big star And after they gave him, you know, all these horrible, you know, they gave him the ringmaster gimmick, which went over like a fart in church. <laughs> the ringmaster. Who is he, the manager for Insane Clown Posse? <laughs> exactly. So they... So they give him all these bad gimmicks, and then he comes up with a stone cold, or the you know the, the 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 idea for a stone cold type character, but he can't come up with a name. So they're faxing him over all these horrible names. You know, WWE Creative, you know, you think WWE Creative only sucks now, but obviously it used to suck back then because they faxed him over page after page of names and like like Ice Dagger, Ice and, Dagger, Ice Dagger. That would have got him over. And of course, my personal favorite, Chili McFreeze. Chili McFreeze. Can't they reuse that name somehow? Please. No, they can't. They can't reuse it now because Lord Alfred's no longer with us. And you would really need Lord Alfred to do the Chili McFreeze intro because he would do oh. those freeze bar things. <laughs> Chili McFreeze. But this is almost as fun to freeze as he is to eat. <laughs> I guess he would be Pat Patterson's favorite wrestler if that was the case. <laughs> So this book on tape, I mean, it's like really, you know, it should be really interesting, and it's it's read by Austin and 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 Jim Ross. Oh, so you think that boy, that would be very interesting. It's not. It's horrible because they read it like this. I went to Memphis, worked for Jerry Jarrett. I didn't like it. I didn't make much money. 
I mean, it's literally that much emotion and stuff, and it's it's absolutely abysmal. Oh, so it's about as exciting as a trip to the library. I I enjoy going to the library. I'm maybe this will be my weekly segment. Like you have your new weekly segment, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, and I was thinking, boy, wouldn't it be neat if if like wrestle crap was a book on tape? Oh, you need to do that. Who who would read it? Um, my, my first choice obviously would be Ole Anderson and the Voice Box. <laughs> now, see, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Speaking of uh, fetish, hey, what a gr- I'm so glad to see that they are following up on the Gene Snitsky foot fetish angle. Yes, I was very disappointed when they kind of dropped that because he was like kind of like you know like a foot fetish kind of bounty hunter, foot <laughs> fetish man for hire. You know, like a cross between Boba Fett and your average pervert on the internet. He's like Boba Foot. <laughs> <laughs> Giggles times happy hour is returned. Uh, the show, you know, we made it about almost 19 minutes before the show just took the downward spiral. <laughs> I dare anyone not to giggle at the term Boba Foot. <laughs> That's, I will refer to him now for the rest of my life as Boba Foot. <laughs> if, I tell you what, if, if anybody can bring a sign to a WWE live event and get it on on tape, <laughs> holding up a sign that says, Gene Snitsky equals Boba Foot, <laughs> I will give you not only the Dusty Rhodes book that no one wants, I will give you. I will give you anything you want if you can get Boba Foot on TV. Here's something else I don't understand. What don't you understand? Matt Hardy's return. That poor guy. But they should have just put him in with the Undertaker, because he was buried alive. <laughs> I don't even understand. He only comes back, and he should have the push of his life. And the, I... all, all they show is him getting his ass kicked. Yeah, that was it. it I, I swear to God, he, he it it had a feel when he came back. It had a feel like you know, like you know, something revolutionary. You know? It was going to be something big. Yeah, but, but he comes back and his first match back, he loses because Edge has beaten him so badly. Huh. Four minutes in, that they had to stop the match. Terrible. I haven't seen a squash like that since the the heyday of SD Jones. I haven't seen a squash like that since Grandpa Joe's farm sale. Insert crickets here. <laughs> but I feel really horrible for Matt Hardy. You I know. do too. Real horrible. Oh no. <laughs> it's, it's that, you know what that means. It's, it's that time again, isn't it? It is that time. It's time... Ladies and gentlemen, for Blade Braxton's... <laughs> I can't even continue when I hear that music. I, 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 I lost it when I was trying to recite it last week. <laughs> it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for Blade Bra- Braxton's weekly wrestling haiku. And as always, we remind you that this haiku does not come with crown as illustrated. Okay, here we go. Summing up the world of wrestling in 17 syllables. <laughs> can you can you explain again why we're doing this? Uh, I am not on the I am not on the right med- medication to offer a good explanation why. Well, basically, you're, you you told us last week the reason we're doing this is because you, a lot of people don't have time to follow oh, all yeah. this stuff. Yes, that is exactly why. Yeah, you know, four hours of wrestling every week. Give me a break. I can just sum everything up, everything you need to know. No need for boring two-hour-long news radio shows with a bunch of geeks bitching about spots. But you see, the more that we just drag on, the show might wind up two hours. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've already seen Raw. I don't need to hear anybody bitch about it for two hours about how it wasn't a five-and-a-half-star match. None of that. You don't need to watch if you're if you're at work and you, you know, you missed Raw. You don't have time to watch it again. So, in three lines, seventeen syllables, everything you need to know, sir. Okay. 
So here we go. Up, everyone take a deep breath. Okay. Poor old Matt Hardy. Work or, work or shoot, we asked. Try shoot. Ah. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> I, I might actually make make it through one of these one week. See, I learned last I learned last week that I I can't take a drink whenever you start this because I start laughing so hard it like comes out of my nose. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Matt. <laughs> okay. Serious. <clears throat> Here we go. In, Here we go. In <laughs> five, four, three, two, one, go. Poor old Matt Hardy. Work or shoot, we asked. Try shot, as in your career. 